Hello YouTube, uh, this is hopefully going to be a very brief video on um, how we might comment on the nature of frequency distributions, that is histograms or bar graphs, just by looking at its basic shape. At least, uh, what could we say about the data by kind of looking at how it's distributed over a continuum of value. So, uh, you'll notice here that I've uh, pasted in a graphic that I scanned in from a textbook, as a matter of fact, with eight different uh, least classifiable uh, distribution shapes, or at least commonly used ones, or uh, ones we talk about often. But, um, but yeah, let's take a look at a few of these, starting with this one in the top left here. Now, this one in the top left, as a matter of fact, is the, uh, I would say, one of the most essential types of distributions we can talk about. Uh, I know it's probably kind of hard to read here, but we say that this is a bell-shaped distribution. And so, let's go ahead and kind of give this some, some time of day, since it's really important here. We say a bell-shaped distribution, and the reason why is because uh, if we were to make this a nice smooth curve, you know, with infinitely many classes, we'd say something that is normally distributed, bell-shaped, you know, it looks like this, okay? And the reason why we call this normally distributed is because, you know, it wouldn't matter what variable we chose. We say like shoe size, you know, or foot length or something like that, or height. Height maybe is our variable. We say weight. If we were to now take, say, a bunch of people or measure their shoe size or their height or their weight, we would say that there'd be, a, you know, like the average would be somewhere in the middle here, if you would think, okay? And most people have shoe sizes or something uh, you know, their height somewhere here in the middle uh, towards the, the average value. And as we tend to go away from the average, okay, the frequency starts to drop down. That is, you know, we could say statistically speaking, if you, if you had a shoe size that was much larger than the average, like way over here, you would say not many people would have that shoe size, so the frequency would drop off. But the same thing is true if we were to deviate to the left of the average or the mean. Uh, and, and that is, say, you know, like really small feet uh, over here somewhere. We'd say this is not very prevalent, so its frequency would also be very, very small. But we say things that are normally distributed typically have like a middle bump. Now, the, the distinction I want to draw between this little graphic that I drew over here on the left and the, and the graphic you see here on the right is also, uh, or is this. The, the picture I've drawn here, if this were perfectly symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, then we would say this is a, a normally distributed variable, normally distributed variable. Now, uh, so a lot of people think I'm being a turd uh, about this, but we say normally distributed variable here, symmetrical, symmetrical, you know, in an infinite case. This distribution on the right here, I'm going to be very, very clear on this one, is approximately bell-shaped, you know, approximately normally distributed. And when I say approximately, Notice here that, you know, we've got this middle bar here. and This was like the highest frequency in here, this, this class right here. It had the most uh, data values. <clears throat> but you notice that not necessarily is this symmetrical. I mean, like the bars on the right don't look identical to the bars on the left. So just want to be cool on this one. But we say that it is approximately normally distributed or somewhat bell-shaped, okay? Cool. So let's take a look at our uniform graph. Uniform uh, means basically... Uh, ba you know, somewhat unchanging, somewhat, somewhat unchanging or constant. Okay, now I'm just making that phrase up here. It's not like a technical term, but when we say uniform, like in physics, okay, or something like that, we say, we measure uh, motion, we say uniform motion is unchanging motion. Well, we're saying, look at the frequencies here. Now, is it perfectly uniform? No, perfectly uniform would mean everybody's at the same height. It's like constant, uh, but we can say this, it is somewhat constant, or at least somewhat uniform, or approximately uniform. Okay, so we have bell-shaped uniform. Let's take a look at these next two. Now, we refer to these as J-shaped and reverse J-shaped, respectively, and I'll let you figure out why, but we say, of course, the letter J and the Roman letter J, and then the reverse J looks something like this. Now, somewhat of a misnomer, but you'll notice that uh, as far as J-shaped goes, this kind of basic shape looks like this. It doesn't have to be kind of what I would call accelerating upward. Uh, and then reverse J is kind of decreasing here, and I don't want to say always decreasing. We'll talk about why in just a moment. But what I want to do is draw a distinction between J-shaped and reverse J-shaped, and the next two, which happen to be referred to as right-skewed. I'm going to put an R here if you can't read it. Right-skewed and left-skewed graphs. Sorry, graphs. Distributions. So the 
primary difference between J-shape and reverse J-shape, which are this second row, these are J's, and our right and left skewed, which is our third row, happens to be this. You'll notice with right skewed and left skewed data, it actually has a bump. It is a bump. And then like what I'm going to call a tail. So on our right skewed data, you'll notice that the tail is kind of on the right side. We say tail, tail. Um, put it in red here. We say tail on the left here. So we'd still have this, this kind of average. It's probably dragged towards the center mass of the data here. <clears throat> But then it kind of trails off to the right or to the left. Whereas with J shape or reverse J shape, you'll notice that J shape, I will not say that it's always increasing. Because look at this. We have a set of classes here in which we have uh, equal frequencies. And same thing over here on the left. But I will say this. It is never decreasing. Like this is like, uh, this is the key here. Never decreasing. What this means is it doesn't have a bump. Okay. In this we have something that is, it's like never never increasing. I'm not going to say always decreasing, but I can at least say it is never increasing for our reverse J shape, whereas uh, right skewed and left skewed are like normal in which the center mass of the data is not in the middle, but kind of dragged to the left or to the right and has a tail left or right. So the last two distributions we're going to talk about very, very quickly are these. We say uh, the one on the bottom left here we say is bimodal. Now when you say modal, the base word of modal is mode. And recall from any other statistics units you've gone through in your mathematical careers that uh, the mode means uh, it is the class that had the most frequency, okay, or you know, most often used. And so we say bimodal simply because there are more than one mode. Uh, every other distribution that you've seen up top here has a mode, modal class, okay, that is by far the, the modal class. There's no tie here. Even in our uniform distribution, we had a modal class. But in this case, we have two classes that are both equal height and are the modes. We say bimodal. And this very, very last curve here, last distribution here, we say is like uh, approximately J, or not J-shaped, U-shaped. And for the very reason that it looks like a Roman... Um, letter U. So actually I, I don't want to call it a Roman letter U because they use the letter V for U's anyway. So uh, but we say yes it looks like the letter U. So basically the the center center mass, the the uh, accumulated data or massed data uh, it tends to occur in minimum and maximum values or low end high end and then there's lower frequency here in the middle is very sparse. So anyways um, you know, you want to become familiar with these terms in terms of your distribution shapes because we often want to, of course, use these graphs to describe the distribution of our data. So, enjoy!